I think it's pretty safe to say that the future of the Star Wars franchise seems to be quite expansive, not just with their books, novels, comics, and video games, but also let's not forget about their new live-action Star Wars TV shows, as well as their animated TV series, and even the fourth Star Wars trilogy by Disney and Lucasfilm. This is Mike Zero, make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, the thing about The Rise of Skywalker is that, yes, we do know that it was a very messy and shaky production, all because of Kathleen Kennedy and what she did to many of the major scenes that really involved Palpatine, the Dark Acolyte, Anakin, the other Force Ghosts, Rey, and more. It really was going to be quite a different movie in comparison to what we got by J.J. Abrams with the final cut of Episode Nine all because of what Kathleen Kennedy did during the two phases of reshoots and rewrites back in 2019 and 2018. Now, we do know that Bob Iger and Bob Chapek are still working together as a team to really enhance the Star Wars experience, to really make the new Star Wars universe as popular and as successful as the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's going to take a lot of time and effort to really get that done and down correctly. Now. The thing about The Rise of Skywalker is that, yes, we do know that it's a very flawed movie here and there. There are parts of the movie where it's very strong. I will admit there are scenes in this movie that I think are amazing. I honestly love the Ben Solo and Han Solo reunion on the second Death Star wreckage. Perfectly well done, well acted out, very emotional. Again, the movie has its emotional highs, but it's also got a lot of problems that lie within it. Now, with that being said, of course, a lot of fans have been wondering about what could have been. Now, since the release of The Rise of Skywalker, many fans around the world have been very curious about what could have been if Kathleen Kennedy did not interrupt with the scenes that J.J. Abrams and George Lucas were working on for the final film of the Skywalker saga. Now, it's described that currently Bob Chapek is working with everything in his power to release the JJ cut slash Lucas cut of The Rise of Skywalker sometime in 2023 on Disney Plus, where one of the major sequences involved the Dark Acolyte, portrayed by actor Matt Smith. Now, it's said that one major scene that was filmed involved a training session between both Emperor Palpatine and the Dark Acolyte, where Palpatine would welcome Kylo Ren in the beginning of the film, within its opening scene, where he would allow Kylo and the Dark Acolyte to engage in a lightsaber training duel in the specific scene. Now, it's described that the Acolyte used two red lightsaber blades against Kylo Ren's cross guard in the training session, where Kylo Ren would eventually gain the upper hand against the Acolyte on Exegol. Once Kylo proved his strength to Palpatine, this is where both the Acolyte and Kylo Ren would kneel in front of Palpatine while hooked up to his machine. So let me stop right here for a second, is that this training session sounds very intense. It sounds like it could have been something surreal to see, where Palpatine is essentially sitting on on his throne hooked up to that machine still, watching the Dark Acolyte and Kylo Ren duel it out to see exactly what Kylo Ren is made of, if he is even worthy of siding himself with Palpatine, right? So the scene would then progress to the Dark Acolyte revealing a vision to Kylo Ren by handing him a Sith holocron and showing Kylo Ren Palpatine's plan to use his fleet to destroy certain star systems within the unknown regions. Now, this holocron was said to once have belonged to the Sith King, which of course is intended to be portrayed by Keanu Reeves in the new Star Wars trilogy, mind you. It's described that one side story in the series involved the Dark Acolyte hunting down Force Sensitives across the galaxy where one of the Force Sensitives that were killed by Smith's character was described to be an ex-Jedi of Luke's that would be shown in the form of a flashback. So, very interesting. I think the thing that really stands out to me the most here is how the Dark Acolyte actually hands Kylo Ren the holocron of the Sith King of Exegol that has long passed. Now, in case you guys did not know, that throne that you do see in Episode 9, it's not Palpatine's. Palpatine only adopted that throne. That is actually the throne of a Sith King that once lived on Exegol and ruled the Sith Eternal. Now, somehow, some way, there's an ancient holocron, an ancient Sith holocron, mind you, of different technology that Palpatine got his hands on and allowed the Dark Acolyte to show him this. Not just that, also that vision sequence sounds very promising, where it's supposed to be a quick vision where the Acolyte would show Kylo Ren of him hunting down Force Sensitives and even taking down one of Luke's ex-Jedi members. 
So here's the thing, is that Kathleen Kennedy obviously didn't want any of this stuff to be embedded within the Rise of Skywalker because you can see how it focuses away from the Resistance and the character of Rey, which I think is the more boring side of the movie. I really never really cared about the Resistance, to be quite honest, in the Rise of Skywalker. I just felt it was very flat in both this movie and in The Last Jedi. The Force Awakens, the Resistance was actually quite promising, but as time went along, it just became more and more of a letdown of what Disney was really doing with this, their version of the Rebellion, essentially. So, with that being said, guys, you know, drop a comment below. Let me know about all of this in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.